Welcome to Dodging Diabetes with these three foods. Can three foods really help you dodge or disarm a serious disease like type 2 diabetes? Well, yeah, three foods really can. And I'm super excited to show you what these three foods that are common everyday foods, you probably have them in your refrigerator already, and they are affordable. And I'm going to show you how to make them so delicious. I'm Zanya Foco, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and I have been in this field for over <laughs> 30 years. And I'm excited to be able to really share how simple it is because diabetes can be so confusing, right? People are, they don't know, should I, I Let's do the ketogenic diet, no carbs at all. Should I have no starches, no sugars, no fruit? What should I do? How do I control diabetes? Does meat matter? Meat doesn't raise my blood sugar, does it? All, all the different confusing about diabetes and I wanna cut through and make it simple. We're gonna focus on these three foods. How simple, how to add them so simply. So don't worry, now remember, why did I pick this subject, diabetes? Because type two diabetes is off the charts in America. And so many people are being diagnosed with it. And so many people, diet can make such a difference. And I'm proud of you. Thank you for taking the time today to invest in yourself and the health of your family as well from what you're going to learn today. So with no further ado, shall we get started with food number one? Food number one is fruit. That's right fruit. You're going, Zanya, wait a second. There's sugar in fruit. In fact, even my doctor has told me, cut the carbs, cut the sugar, and cut the fruit. Why in the world would you pick the A number one out of these three foods that dodge diabetes? Why would you pick fruit? Well, I'm going to tell you because <laughs> fruit does this. Studies show that higher fresh fruit, we're not talking about juice where the fiber has been removed, but whole fresh, real, it can be frozen fruit, but fresh fruit consumption is associated with lower risk of diabetes and if you have diabetes, lower diabetic vascular complications. That's right. And contrary to, con to common belief, fresh fruit consumption is not associated with elevated blood glucose level. Huh. Wow. That's a pretty big deal. Yep, that's right. How does that work? Well, fruits are properly packaged with fiber and water and antioxidants. And remember, what I'm teaching you today is not just how to monitor your carbohydrates in your diet, but how to get the antioxidants, how to get all the vitamins and minerals that help us work on a cellular level so that we can fight insulin resistance because that is what's plaguing America is not only are we having too many carbohydrates floating in our bloodstream, but what we have is that we're not able to use it. And we have insulin resistance and the insulin can't get the sugar into the cell and we want to improve that situation and nutrients are what helps us do this, is they rewire the pleasure pathways of your brain, uh, effectively uh, replacing candies, cookies, soda, and other sweets, driving down sugar cravings and total intake of added sugars. You know, I wanna tell you the story. I was working with a woman one time, many years ago, she was a nurse and she said, Zanya, you know, like my breakfast is perfect, my lunch is perfect. And my dinner is great and I exercise, she said, but every afternoon I get these terrible sweet cravings and I have to go down to the gift shop, I have to buy candy, I have to eat it. And if I didn't get those uncontrollable sweet cravings, then I would be fine. What is wrong with me? How can I control these sweet cravings? And I said, well, I said, how, how much fresh fruit, how much fruit do you eat? And she goes, fruit? She goes, isn't that high in sugar? <laughs> I said, no, as a matter of fact, it's high in fiber and it's high in water content and it's high in all the essential nutrients and things, the antioxidants that you need. And you know what else? It's very high in, it's high in the simple carbohydrates that your brain requires for its functioning. If you don't get that fruit, your brain will send you a sweet craving. It's actually a fruit craving. How do you read that fruit craving? Chocolate candy, right? I worked with her. I said, I want you to 
start eating fruit. She goes, really? Yeah, fresh fruit, all kinds. I want you to have, go for four pieces a day. Four pieces a day? And I said, okay, if you go for four, you'll have three. You're going to have to buy a lot. That's 21 pieces just for you each week. You're going to have to bring it to work with you. You'll have it breakfast, lunch, afternoon, evening, something like that, and have fruit regularly throughout the day. And so sure enough, she said, okay, I'll try it for two weeks. She came back in two weeks, and I said, so, how was your sweet cravings? And she said, what sweet cravings? Hmm. She goes, you know, I didn't have a one. Fruit does that. It absolutely does. It gives your brain the simple carbohydrate that you need so you don't get sweet cravings. And also, will answer a sweet craving when you're having a sweet craving. Just 12 grapes will do the ticket for you or an orange. So really think about those things. How can we use fruit? How can we put it together? Your sweetness to cereal. Don't ever let your cereal go naked, ever. It is, it replaces your Pop-Tart or donut uh, at breakfast, and it's your dessert to lunch and dinner. And the goal is three to four servings a day. And so and you wanna have not more than two servings at a time. Really, you wanna spread it out throughout the day. Sound good? Yeah, that's not that hard to do. And yes, size matters. You know, too much of a good thing, of course. Um, don't eat the whole watermelon in one sitting. I don't think I probably have to tell you that. You know, fruit comes in single serving packages, except for watermelon. And half a banana counts as one serving. I, I, a lot of people say, aren't bananas, you know, fattening? Aren't they, there's, look, they have twice the calories, twice the carbohydrate, twice the natural sugars of an apple. It just means that a banana has less water in it. It just means it's a better bargain. It has two fruits in one. A serving of fruit is about the size of your fist, and a banana is about two of those. So it's not a bad thing. It's just that, you know, and sometimes I'll eat a whole banana when I'm that hungry and I don't have anything else around me. But a half a banana on my cereal is perfect, and we can share it, and that works uh, economically as well. Dried fruit means that the serving is smaller. Look for no sugar added, and that's great. Limit juice, opt for the whole fruit, and that's um, a great way to go. I just, I just want you to know, no. Either limit juice or avoid juice, really. Opt for whole fruit instead. Done right, fruit is fantastic, and fruit is our dessert. Now, since I said juice turns into blood sugar more quickly, the fiber isn't there to protect, so what about smoothies? We probably shouldn't have smoothies either, right? Well, people with diabetes absolutely can have smoothies. What you want is not the loaded, sugar-loaded ones at the mall. And many of those pack in 30, 40, 50 grams of added sugar in one of those, and that's really not good. Smoothies done right are sweetened only by fruit and the whole fruit. Include protein. I like to have use some milk. You can use soy milk, um, Greek yogurt, tofu, cottage cheese, nuts. You'll notice I didn't mention almond milk just because it's not high in protein, actually, but these choices are high in protein. Flax and hemp and chia seeds are all great additions. I never make a smoothie without at least one of these added. And sneak in a vegetable. That's right, sneak in a vegetable, cauliflower, cabbage, carrots, spinach, kale, celery, cucumber, any of those. At least one vegetable in every smoothie, that's right, at least. So, well, you can just have a serving of fruit after a meal as a dessert. What if you had a purple power smoothie? Whether it's a breakfast or whether it's a dessert, a small serving as a dessert. What if we could do that instead? I want to show you this purple power smoothie and it has purple cabbage in it. Check it out. Here we go. I'm using soy milk. You can use any kind of milk you want. I got two cups. And so two cups goes right in there. You want your liquid always on the bottom. And then blueberries, we, these are great. The anthocyanins are magically great for diabetes. We're using a banana. You could eat it frozen or um, unfrozen, uh, either way. And then the vegetable that we're choosing is a cup of cabbage. Yep, a cup of it. We'll let our blender do the chopping. Don't need to do a lot of work chopping it. And then next up is almonds. I've got a quarter cup of almonds. This is gonna serve two for breakfast or four for a dessert. And then two tablespoons of ground flaxseed. I'm using a golden flaxseed. 
which I think is really special. And then I'm using ginger, either fresh or ground, your choice. And I'm gonna do about two coins worth. Sometimes I do three coins worth, whatever. Um, I love ginger, love the flavor of it. And then cinnamon, we're adding a half a teaspoon of cinnamon to this. You could add a whole teaspoon of cinnamon if you wanted to. But this is going to be a wonderful thing together. You'll never know that there's cabbage in there. I have surveyed so many people, they have no idea. They're like, no, we don't taste any cabbage in there, not at all. But it's a beautiful purple color. Look at that. Now, this would be your breakfast-like serving, or this would be a dessert size serving. And the nutrients that are in this that help you with insulin resistance is amazing. And remember, it's not just total carbohydrate. It's not just counting carbohydrate. It's about improving our health on a cellular level. And that's exactly what um, this, these nutrients, these foods that I'm talking about can do for you. Now, I could have picked blueberries as our food. I could have picked cabbage as our food. <laughs> I could have picked fruit is what we're going with here. There are so many uh, great foods that help fight diabetes and they're all in that smoothie. So whether you enjoy fruit by itself or in a smoothie, let's take a look how powerful this swap out can be. I want to show you nutritionally that I believe you can trade this up for ice cream. That's right. I think you can. How many of you like to have ice cream once a week? How many times a week? Three, five, every night, two scoops? Well, let's take a look. The added sugar, if you go down to total carbohydrate, 46 grams of total carbohydrate to 24 in the Purple Power Smoothie. That's the total carbohydrate, so it's less, which is great. But you know what else? The added sugar, look at that, is 26 grams of added sugar, 26 grams in the ice cream and zero added sugar in the Purple Power Smoothie. Wow, what a difference. Woo doggies, what a difference. And I want you to know that adds up. Now I happen to know that 26 grams of added sugar, and it's not counting the sugars that's in the milk. This is added sugar. I want you to know that I know that there's four grams of sugar in every teaspoon. So 26 grams to get the visual on that, divide that by four, and that will give you that that is six and a half teaspoons of sugar. Six and a half teaspoons, can you imagine? Six and a half teaspoons of sugar is what they put in that ice cream. And if you did this three times a week, you had that smoothie instead that had zero added sugar. Three times a week, that would add up to 19 and a half teaspoons of sugar not going through your body, just from this small habit. Just from this small habit. And guess what? If you hung on to this habit for a three months, three times a week for three months, that would add up to five cups of sugar <laughs> not going through your body in three months' time just from this little habit. One little habit. That's the power of one little habit. So... Does it make a difference? It makes a difference. The final answer on fruit. Will fruit help you gain control of your carbohydrate intake? Will it help you improve on a cellular level with all the antioxidants, all the added nutrition? Will it help you improve your insulin sensitivity? Absolutely. My question is, will you say yes to the power of fruit three times a day? Will you do it? Yay. Yay you. That was our first of three foods. Are you ready for food number two? Well, before we go to food number two, I want to tell you a little story about why are we doing this. And I had given a presentation one time. This woman came up to me afterwards and she said, Zanya, I am, I'm digging everything that you're talking about. She said, but there was a time when I wasn't. And I go, what do you mean? And she said, well, she goes, I went into my doctor and he said, look, I've been talking about your blood pressure. You've been taking a blood pressure medication. I've been talking about your cholesterol. It's high. We're probably going to have to start blood pressure medication. But guess what? Now you're pre-diabetic. You're a metabolic mess. You really have got to lose some weight, start exercising and change what you're eating. Just make some small, simple changes. He goes, I want you to take a nutrition class. This is a nutrition class I suggest you take. Take this small, get some out there walking, lose some weight. This will make a difference. Change what you're eating, change what you're doing. And she just looked at him and she said, I just, I said, 
he's not the boss of me. I walked out that door and I said, I feel fine. I'm not changing anything. And for the next half a year or so, she didn't do anything. She didn't make any changes. And then one phone call made all the difference. She got a phone call from her son. Hi, Mom. Hey, son. She goes, guess what? He goes, what? He says, you're going to be a grandma. She was elated. She was so excited. And those words, when he said, you're going to be a grandma, she immediately was so excited. And then she started reflecting on the kind of grandma that she wanted to be. Because she had two different grandmas. She had the one that was super active, did everything with her, was fit, just young acting and active. And then there was the other grandma that she had that was not very healthy and well fit or active or involved with her. And she started thinking about it and realized, I want to be that grandma. And right now I'm headed to be that other grandma that I don't want to be. I got to make a change. So she ate some crow, as you might want to call it. She called the doctor's office, didn't talk to the doctor, but talked to the nurse and said, hey, what was that nutrition class I was supposed to take? Took that class, learned all these simple things that we're talking about uh, today, and made these small, simple changes. Started walking 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, and then 30 minutes a day. And she, in three months' time, lost 35 pounds. She went into her doctor. Her doctor was like elated. Not only did she escape type 2 diabetes, she no longer had any indication of that. She also didn't need cholesterol-lowering medication, and she eventually got off her blood pressure medication. Is that, like, pretty cool? Very cool. So that's, that's why we're doing this. Diabetes is a serious disease. It causes serious complications to your heart, stroke, Heart attack, stroke, eye disease, losing your eyesight, um, your limbs, uh, neuropathy, your feet, your kidneys. There's so much. There's so much to making these changes and improving your health. So let's get back to food number two, shall we? Drum roll, please. Food number two is leafy greens. That's right, leafy greens. <laughs> You're going, I knew she'd tell me I have to eat like a rabbit. Those things are tasteless. Oh my gosh, what do I, well, first of all, hold the phone, just hang on with me. Leafy greens, they boost your intake of important nutrients like folicin, B vitamins, and antioxidants, which improves insulin sensitivity. And this is really important. We want the insulin that our body does make to actually make it into the cell. It's the key. It's the key that takes the blood sugar into the cell so that our blood sugar doesn't run high and be corrosive like sugar in a gas tank of a car and start hurting our body. No, we want it to escort into the cell. That's where it needs to go. And these nutrients help us do that. So it decreases insulin resistance and it improves insulin sensitivity. That's what we want. And you know what else it fights to mention too? I, I had to mention that because I lost my mother to Alzheimer's disease after a, just a seven year fight with that. And I'm on a, I, I, and my cousin just passed away at 59 years of age of Alzheimer's, 59 years of age. And I bet you know somebody in your family with Alzheimer's disease. So guess what? The things that help fight diabetes are the same things that help fight Alzheimer's. Oh my gosh. So, um, hey, we're, it's all, it's all double benefit. I couldn't help but mentioning but here's the thing, the greens, when you look at, and maybe you've been watching on Netflix, um, the Blue Zones, How to Live to 100, greens are one of the major foods that they eat. And salad greens edge carbohydrates down by replacing one or two slices of bread in a sandwich. You know, having a half a sandwich and a salad, or a sandwich and a salad instead of french fries, something like that. Uh, replacing the fries on the side, right, with a salad. These are great things. It's not that we can't have bread or we can't have the wrap. We can't have carbohydrates. We need to have some carbohydrates at every meal. But greens are going to help displace that so that we're not eating so, 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 so many. The extra slices of pizza that you didn't need, oh my goodness, pizza salad does great to help disperse the addictive properties <laughs> that are in pizza that we want to keep eating and eating. A salad first will go a long ways to help you. It's not, you know, people say, isn't pizza fattening and isn't it bad for diabetes? Well, not the first slice. 
<laughs> not the second slice, but it's the third, fourth, and fifth. And, and salad can save you from that. I also wanted to mention, who doesn't love a hamburger? Do you love a hamburger? Hamburger and fries, maybe even. Well, I'd like to share what Scott and I do uh, to help enjoy the, all the flavor of a hamburger. And you don't even need a recipe for this. All right, you don't need a recipe. I want to show you how we use greens to replace the two white starchy bread buns, right? Or to replace the French fries, something like that, to help bring that down. And so this is called the hamburger salad. No recipe required. Let me show you uh, this beautiful dish right here. It starts with cooking up your burgers. You can crumble it up or you can put, cook them in the patties. And I chop up onion. You could add onion powder. And I add garlic powder to them. So no salt, but <clears throat> definitely season it with that. And then you start up with this big tub of greens. Got to have, our house always has this tub of greens. And then I add extra vegetables. <clears throat> I add extra vegetables like cabbage, tomatoes, and radishes. <laughs> Cucumbers would be good. Uh, any vegetable like this. Onions, of course, and your favorite. And then I add garbanzo beans to the salad because I want a complex carbohydrate that's high in fiber, that has a low rise in blood sugar, and beans are that. And I take my burger. This is a very lean burger. You can see how lean this is. It's a 90% lean, and that's what I suggest. Now, this would be for my husband. I would use half of that. But then pickles to go on this, chopped pickles, just a half a tablespoon or so, or a tablespoon of chopped pickles or relish, and a little bit of mayonnaise. I'm putting mayonnaise right in here, right? So this is what I call plop, plop, uh, squirt, squirt. So a little bit of mustard and ketchup and that. You can add some cheese if you want to, but I don't. I skip it. I cut the cheese because there's so much flavor here that you just don't need it. And when you start to stir this all up, and you're like, Zanya, you're like, why did you put garbanzo beans in there? I put garbanzo beans in because this is gonna give the satiety that I need like french fries do. Every bite of that tastes like you're eating a hamburger. Every bite, a hamburger, mm, hamburger, mm, hamburger, mm, hamburger. And it fills you up. It's a lot of crunching and munching. And you're getting all those added nutrients that you just don't get from white starchy bun and fries. The fat that they cook fries in is not good for you. The potato itself has a quick acting carbohydrate. Garbanzo beans are gonna provide the needed carbohydrate that we need at every meal. You wanna have some complex carbohydrate and this is fiber rich. And remember I told you, I don't know if I said this, but not only do the three foods that I'm sharing with you help you fight diabetes, they also help you lose weight. They also help you sponge cholesterol right out of your body and also help you fight blood pressure. Uh-huh, all those things. And so the greens and the beans, this is an added food. Actually, I could call that food number four for fighting diabetes is beans because that soluble fibers, it goes to your body, it turns into blood sugar much more slowly. And it also, the fiber that's in it, you eat it, it goes to your body and cholesterol gets absorbed and you poop it out. So it lowers cholesterol, helps your blood sugar and gives you that starch that you need at that meal because you want to have good. The whole thing about fighting diabetes is learning what's the smart way to spend your carbohydrates because in America, we kind of don't do that very good. We're spending carbohydrates on the amount of sugar that's in soda, right? We know not to do this. This is a lot of sugar, a lot of sugar that's in a one liter Mountain Dew. We want to get rid of these carbohydrates and you wanna use the good for you carbohydrates. That's exactly right. You can do that, you can absolutely do that. So back to our burger, take a look at this. What if you could trade it up? Typical hamburger and French fries as you take a look at this. And 840 calories in that meal, hamburger salad comes down to 520. Uh, total carbohydrate, 85 grams, 48 grams, bringing down the total carbohydrate, yay. Uh, look at the fiber, it goes from six to 10. We want more fiber, absolutely. And fat grams, oh, all the way from 41 grams down to 18, and the saturated fat all the way down to 4.5 because you used a ham, lean hamburger, and I only put a tiny bit of cheese on there, if any at all definitely low so that's great um the improvements that you can make and you're just as satisfied you're just as satisfied 
Yeah, and if we did all the nutrients, the nutrients would be way better too. So I wanted to teach you more than just the hamburger salad trick. Um, I wanted to, to say that when it comes to salads, you, you don't need a recipe. Um, you just need a box of greens, right? The big old already washed, ready to go, and love your leftovers. Like maybe cook enough extra in the evening so that you don't ha you can have this for lunch. Um, to be added, ro roast off extra vegetables, steam extra vegetables, add them to. I love to have raw and cooked vegetables on my salad. I love to add some leftover brown rice or leftover quinoa. Add those things. Easy, easy peasy. Also, keep it saucy. I mean, the dr salad dressing, a lot of salad dressings have a lot of sugar in them. So use chili, use hummus, use salsa and guac. These would be great ideas to make it saucy and delicious without, and, and you can watch those dressings. And you can also add a fruity twist. You can use oranges, berries, raisins uh, to have that fruit that in there. That's a, a really a delicious way to make it. Or pull from the pantry and find your essentials and keep them fully stocked. Remember, vinegar and oil, classic A, best way to go for the dressing for your salad. You don't have to worry about any added sugars, but you can find them without added sugars as well. And I always add canned beans. Yep, that's my new croutons, always adding those. And tuna and salmon packets, these are great things too. So you don't need a recipe to have greens and boost up the amount of greens that you are doing. So I also want you to not be duped. All salads are not healthy, right? I remember my neighbor, uh, she was like, oh, Zahn. She goes, yeah, I ate at Applebee's today. She said, I got, the, um, I got that grilled uh, oriental chicken. It has the red apple on it, so I think it's their heart healthy choice. And I was like, uh, no, the red apple means it's a signature Applebee's dish not a heart healthy choice it means that they've injected extra calories fat sodium and sugar <laughs> and she's looking at me like no i felt like it was a really healthy choice ladies and gentlemen can you believe this makes that hamburger and fries at 840 look like diet food yep 104 grams of carbohydrate your goal is really 50 grams at a meal would be ideal this is 52 grams of total sugars they didn't delineate if those were added sugars but i can bet you that that is pretty much added sugars because there's no naturally occurring fruit here this is an unbelievable amount and the saturated fat we can only have 13 grams of saturated fat in a day there's no red meat here it's chicken how in the world and the sodium oh Remember I told you, I was going to tell you tip today to help you with your blood pressure, to help you with your cholesterol. This meal is a heart attack and it's a salad. It will wreak so much havoc on your blood sugar and you'll think you did good because you ordered a salad. And I want you to know it's not just this one. You look, they have seven different salads, all of them, the sodium, the sugars, all of them, high, high, high. So learning to dine out smartly is an important skill if you dine out. But one of the things I want to teach you is that it's, it's pretty easy to cook a little more at home. Yes, it's easy to make smart choices at restaurants, but it's easy to cook more at home. I want to show you that it's not that hard. I want to show you you don't even need a recipe. Question is, how many of you will say yes to dodging with greens? Will you do it? Will you do it? <laughs> Great. All righty. We've covered two foods. I think we're ready for food number three. What do you think? Food number three? What is it? It's cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower. You know the memes. If cauliflower can be pizza, you can be anything. <laughs> cauliflower. It's incredibly nutrient rich for improving insulin sensitivity while also being low in carbohydrate and low in calories. So it can help us manage our weight. It can help us trade out things uh, to bring down calories in a meal. I can replace so many higher carb food choices. Um, for instance, brown rice. Brown rice is a great choice and white rice is, is not so great of a choice, but even brown rice, white rice, brown rice, I like brown rice, but to have a whole entire cup of that might be, it's quite a bit. It's, it's 180 calories. It's 39 grams of carbohydrate. That might be the right amount for someone who's very active or for a man, uh, but for a woman, my age trying to manage weight, more like a third cup is the right amount of rice. 
So rice cauliflower can beef up your portion, and you can mix them, you can cook them together, um, but rice cauliflower, you can serve rice cauliflower as rice. And look at that, it's only 40 calories, and the total carbohydrate is only 8 grams. You can really, rice cauliflower is pretty cool. It's a very, very cool option. You can rice it yourself, running it through a food processor with a fresh raw cauliflower, or you can buy it already bagged and already done for you. I'm all about convenience, aren't you? Yeah, when you can. Also, mashed potatoes. Uh, I know I love me some mashed potatoes, but guess what? When I make mashed potatoes, I make half of it. I put cauliflower in there with it, so it's a little less potatoes, and there's cauliflower. Nobody knows there's cauliflower already. Or, better yet, just mashed cauliflower. And look at that. What a great savings in calories, and what a great savings in, and you're getting more really neat cancer fighting and cellular helping us with um, that insensitivity, insulin insensitivity that we're trying to improve. So cauliflower's got that. So you can also... Make them into chips. Chips? I mean, look at that. Does that kind of look like it could be a chip? Well, what about loaded cauliflower nachos? In a moment, I'm going to show you how to make these. But before I do, and let me tell you, you're probably going, cauliflower nachos? Let me just show you. For dinner, we'll serve cauliflower nachos in our house instead of nachos bel grande. Let's do a little comparison. One order of that is 730 calories, but only 440 of my loaded, my loaded cauliflower nachos. Or 81 grams of carbohydrate or 36 grams of carbohydrate. That's a really nice improvement. And the fat grams, look at that, from 38 down to 18. And the saturated fat from 6 down to 4. Let me show you how to make these cauliflower nachos, shall we? You cut out the core, just run your knife around so the core comes right out just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slice these into about half inch. And, and the ends fall off and that's fine. Just throw them all in the bowl, it doesn't matter. They're not all gonna be perfect little flat things and that's okay. Uh, they are going to be the base of these nachos. And I'm using a tablespoon of avocado oil avocado oil or olive oil, but avocado oil works really great when you're roasting 400 degrees. And I'm using garlic powder, onion powder, ground cumin, chili powder, a teaspoon of all of those, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and I'm skipping the salt. You don't need that salt. Just skip it. You'll have plenty of flavor without it. And in it goes. So we have, um, I spread it out so that they're as flat as possible, so you're going to get some nice caramelizing and browning. And we're gonna put these in at 400 degrees. Now I'm using convection roast. My, I have what's called an air fryer on my, it, it's convection roast. I'm doing 20 minutes and it's gonna be like an air fry. And if you have convection roast on your oven, yeah, use that button. It's like an air fryer. But if you have an air fryer, then put them in the air fryer, that's for sure. Now, this also calls for chopped cabbage. Yep, a half a cup of chopped cabbage that we're going to do for the last seven minutes of roasting. And then, whoops, I forgot to do the flat edge. The flat edge really helps steady this as I get the seeds out. Now, I take out all the seeds because that takes out any of the crazy heat. And now you just get a really nice little jalapeno flavor, um, seriously. And you can wear a glove with your left hand, uh, but just make sure you wash your hand well so you don't touch your eyes. All right, we have done our 20 minute roast. And check this out. We got some nice browning and caramelization. And I'm going to toss them over because we're going to roast the seven more minutes with the other toppings that we're going to put on this. And it's optional. You don't have to add chicken or turkey. This happens to be cooked turkey I had left over. You can add beans. Don't, that's not optional. Definitely want your beans, black beans we're adding to this. And then that little bit of cabbage on there is going to add another awesome vegetable. And only a third cup of cheese. I believe in using cheese just in small amounts and you, know, you kind of need a little bit. You want that little feeling of nachos, right? You don't have to go crazy with cheese. And then the jalapenos, you could slice them, but I dice them because that way I don't get too much in any one bite. And that's how I've learned to like jalapenos. So we're gonna roast that seven more minutes and ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Woohoo! we got us some nachos. Now this will serve several people for appetizers like a party, game day, football, that kind of thing, or one third of this for a meal. I don't know about you, but this is what I call a heavenly dinner right here. 
And we're gonna add some salsa. Now I buy an organic salsa that's not too high in sodium and I think that's good to look for. And then you can slice uh, some avocado, but mine was not ripe. It was, I was very disappointed. So I happen to have in the refrigerator some of this holy guacamole, which is a really good clean ingredients of guacamole. You can put that on top. And here we go. Are we ready to dig into our cauliflower nachos? Look at that. It's veggie loaded nachos, whatever you want to call it. If you want to take the cauliflower name out of it, you can. Now, you can, there is room to add chips to this. The nutrition information, there's only 36 grams of total carbohydrate. You could add 10 chips to this, which is a serving. And you'd still have that munch and crunch, but you're not eating 30, 40, or 50 chips, which is the problem, right? That's the problem. So don't you love me? You still get to have some chips. They're just gonna last you longer. That's right. And you're gonna have so many more vegetables. You're gonna have so much more nutrition. Those Taco Bell Grandis, ugh, nothing there is helping you on the cellular level. With antioxidants, nothing is helping you be healthier, except they have pinto beans, the, the beans, those are kind of healthy, but they use bad fats in there, so we don't want that. But our dish, it's not that hard to make. And I do admit, one of my goals to helping you dodge diabetes is getting you to roll up your sleeves and get in the kitchen, play some music, and quit dreading cooking. Have a recipe you're excited about making and serving the family. And I challenge you to make those nachos. In fact, let me show you somebody who did make those nachos. Uh, and this is Jenny from Wisconsin. Now, she doesn't look like a grandma, but she is a grandma. So she had her adult children over and her grandchildren. And these loaded cauliflower nachos were a huge hit, she says, with the whole family. And two big cookie sheets were gone instantly. And then she corrected herself. She said, I need to no longer refer to sheet pans as cookie sheets. They are mostly for roasting vegetables. <laughs> yes, that trick that we did, roasting vegetables. Don't do that twice a year. Do that twice a week. Roasting vegetables are a great way to uh, really change uh, into a healthy lifestyle and it deliciously. And then here's Becky from Michigan. She says, I made these for the family last week and they were a hit. No leftovers at all. Uh, the running joke in the house is nothing is what it seems. <laughs> Anything can be made with cauliflower. <laughs> these will be in rotation, especially since one of our goals this year is to eat fewer nacho chips. Isn't that great? Uh, isn't that great? Yay to Becky. Yay to Jenny. Um, really great things. So here's my question. How many of you will say yes to buying some more cauliflower, incorporating more cauliflower, using it in a variety of ways? Nachos, rice cauliflower, mashed, pizza crust. Yes, you can make it into pizza crust too. Yeah. All righty. So these three foods were fun and all. I mean, we turned them into something pretty delicious, didn't we? Yeah. So are there more foods that dodge diabetes like this in the same way? Yes, indeed, there are. Check this out. This is cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is a really great food for people fighting diabetes. Absolutely. And you know what? You can turn them into pancakes and waffles. You're like, really? Yeah, you really, really can. And they're much lower in carbohydrate, much higher in protein, and a wonderful way to start your day. And you can freeze them and have them in the freezer. Oh, it's just great. Coleslaw mix. You can buy a bag of coleslaw mix already shredded and ready to go, and you can saute this up into the most amazing, what we call uh, egg roll in a bowl. Delicious dinner that we love. Zucchini is a wonderful low carbohydrate uh, vegetable once again, and you can use it to make these great pizza boats. You can turn it into spaghetti, zoodle it, noodle it. You can do all kinds of great things with zucchini. Um, we have, I don't know, over 60 recipes of all the different things that you can do with zucchini. And then spaghetti squash is an amazing vegetable. So many people don't know what to do, but it's so exciting to be able to incorporate that and make lasagna, uh, stuffed spaghetti squash, or our Mexican style stuffed spaghetti squash. And then almond flour. Learning and having the right recipes to be able to use almond flour can really help reduce the amount of carbohydrate in your cookies. These are the most delicious peanut butter cookies, and uh, also dates. Dates are a superstar 
in, they have carbohydrate, but they have fiber, they have all these nutrients, and they can replace sugar, and they are an amazing choice to use. You can make these just right nutty uh, cookies. So where do I teach these recipes? I teach these recipes and so much more in the Dodging Diabetes Deliciously online course. It's a four-part course where we dive into how to dodge diabetes in the morning, afternoon, and evening with every meal of the day and snacks. And we talk about restaurants more because let me tell you, there is so many more things to know and learn to not be duped at restaurants. And reading labels, we cover that in depth, all about dodging diabetes and about the supplements. You know, a lot of people are talking about berberine. We're gonna discuss that in the program, we do. And what about chromium? I will give you the information you need about these supplements so you can have a, a good educated conversation with your doctor so you can be active in your care and make wise and good and best decisions. And what about mastering movement? We talk about that in this course too. I've teamed up with Sherry McLaughlin and she's a physical therapist and she leads us through excellent moves that you do standing up that help you improve your core so that we improve our cellular and our insulin sensitivity through exercise. That's right. And how to use walking properly at the right times of day to bring blood sugar down perfectly. So this course, I'm super excited about it. I'd love for you to join us. And if you do sign up, make sure you use the discount code to save. And here's um, Sappho. She took the course recently. She said, I was looking for an eating plan that is sustainable, healthy, tasty, and would lower my A1C. I had already managed to lower my A1C from its all time high by giving up soda and things like that, but I was stuck and needed to lower it further. This program explained just what I needed to do to accomplish that. Using Zanya's information, I have now lowered my A1C a total of 3.8 points. I highly recommend this program. And that's Sappho and Marnie <laughs> from California. Let's give it up for Sappho, way to go. She's just uh, done fantastically. Thank you for joining me for Dodging Diabetes with these three foods. I hope you hit the like button and subscribe and the bell. And I hope you'll join me again for another video real soon. In the meantime, keep it simple and eat real.